the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name. For you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings. In the tenth month of the ninth year of Zedekiah's reign, on the tenth day of the month, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and his whole army advanced against Jerusalem and camped around it and built siege walls on every side. The siege of the city continued until the eleventh year of Zedekiah, on the ninth day of the fourth month, when famine had gripped the city and the people had no more bread, the city walls were breached. Then the king and all the soldiers left the city by night through the gate between the two walls that was near the king's garden. Since the Chaldeans had the city surrounded, they went in the direction of the Arabah. But the Chaldean army pursued the king and overtook him in the desert near Jericho, abandoned by his whole army. The king was therefore arrested and brought to Riblah to the king of Babylon, who pronounced sentence on him. He had Zedekiah's sons slain before his eyes. Then he blinded Zedekiah, bound him with fetters, and had him brought to Babylon. On the seventh day of the fifth month, this was in the 19th year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, came to Jerusalem as the representative of the king of Babylon. He burned the house of the Lord, the palace of the king, and all the houses of Jerusalem. Every large building was destroyed by fire. Then the Chaldean troops who were with the captain of the guard tore down the walls that surrounded Jerusalem. Then Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, led into exile the last of the people remaining in the city and those who had deserted to the king of Babylon and the last of the artisans. But some of the country's poor, Nebuzaradan, captain of the guard, left behind as the vine dressers and farmers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. Let, Let my tongue, tongue be silenced if ever, ever I forget you. you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion. On the aspens of that land we hung up our harps. Let, Let my, my tongue, tongue be silenced, silenced if ever, ever I forget you. you. Though there our captors asked of us the lyrics of our songs, and our despoilers urged us to be joyous. Sing for us the songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land? If I forget you, Jerusalem, may my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if ever I forget you. May my tongue cleave to my palate if I remember you not. If I place not Jerusalem ahead of my joy, let, let my, my tongue, tongue be silenced, silenced if ever I forget you. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ took away our infirmities and bore our diseases. Alleluia, alleluia. 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 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. When Jesus came down from the mountain, the great crowds followed him. And then a leper approached, did him homage, and said, Lord, if you wish, you can make me clean. He stretched out his hand, touched him, and said, I will do it. Be made clean. His leprosy was clean, cleansed immediately. Then Jesus said to him, See that you tell no one, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift that Moses had prescribed. That will be proof for them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. It's, the gift? Yes. Away. it's a short Gospel. It's got so much in it, though. Uh, already, Jesus is getting pretty famous. Crowds are following him everywhere. Uh, and you might wonder why. Is it because, oh, they adore his wisdom and his godliness and we need to hear more? Or, what's he going to do now? And then that's always been a problem with Jesus. Uh, and here, when a leper comes to him and says, Lord, Lord, if you choose to, you can heal me. A real act of faith and belief. And Jesus says, Yes, I do choose you. I do choose to be healed. And he is immediately cleansed. And he said, don't tell anybody how this happened. Just go to the priest, the way Moses had uh, prescribed it. Go to the priest, show yourself cleansed. They'll confirm you're cleansed, and then you can rejoin society. Because a leper lived on the outskirts of society. They were swept away from society for fear of uh, giving disease to society. Um, so uh, far worse than the six feet that we have to allow these days. You know, they gave quite a huge distance all the time. They were on the outskirts uh, of society uh, and, and life, society was life to them. So uh, Jesus says, don't tell anybody it was me, but show yourself cleansed and you'll be able to re-enter society. Now we've seen so many examples where God did, he, uh, Jesus did heal people. And they did proclaim it, even when he asked them not to. And then he's flooded with people from all over who want to see healing and, and uh, give him not, not a bit of peace. And of course, Jesus uh, loves to heal people. But healing is a sign of God, of God's uh, kingdom, of the coming of goodness and forgiveness and salvation. It's a sign. It's something that's wonderful, and he loves to heal humans. But, you know, a lot of people, they just look at it as entertainment. Do you remember when he was arrested and um, Pilate sent him to King Herod? He says, well, he's one of your people. Here, go, go, you, you deal with him. And so Jesus at that time was sent to King Herod. What was King Herod's response? Was he a just king? Well, let's see what they're saying about you. No, no, no. He's like, oh, I've been hearing about you. Do something as if Jesus was an entertainer, a juggler, a, a magician. Uh, and that's what they wanted. They wanted to say, you know, hey, raise someone who's dead. Uh, uh, oh, make the sick all healthy again. Do something neat. Uh, let me pick up a card and let me, yeah. You know, dance, funky dance is kind of what Herod wanted. Of course, Herod was not renowned for his great wisdom and intellect, uh, but um, still many people were like that. And many people, uh, strove to see Jesus and be near Jesus, see what would happen now. He changed a few loaves and, and, and fish, they say, into a huge meal. How can he do it again? Ooh, free food. They're not looking at him in the right way. He's showing them signs, and they're important signs. Signs of God, signs of God in him, and signs of salvation to come. But People very often look at things in the short view. Oh, look at that. Oh, wow. And, uh, and we, we all do it. Uh, we all love the, the fast entertainment and the, and the big, oh my, do something else. So uh, Jesus doesn't want to be taken lightly because his message is not light. The kingdom of heaven is so extremely important to all of us, to all creation. We're not to take it lightly. And his words are not supposed to be taken as entertainment, but as truth and as the pathway to life. And to live by it, even when it's inconvenient. 
and to, uh, uh, especially when it's inconvenient, to put yourself out there even when it's not the easiest thing to do. Um, today we're celebrating my dad's birthday. He would have been 102 years old today. He died at age 86 back in 2004. But um, he, I would always say, oh, of course, all my faith comes from God, but it was through my dad. I learned how to love through my mother. I learned about God through my dad. And he was, uh, he, he taught, uh, he worked in an insurance company uh, during the days. That's where the income came from. But uh, he taught philosophy at Queens College at night. He was the head of the philosophy, philosophy department. He loved philosophy. He loved the church. Um, he loved faith and reason, working things out, figuring things out, but recognizing first where the truth is. The truth is in the faith, and then making it make sense to you. You know, because God makes sense, but very often you have trouble with it because God doesn't always think the way we do, but he is always based in, in love. And my dad, um, would go to Mass daily, even in his uh, working years, and uh, a great lover of the Holy Eucharist and of the Mass, and pass that down to us, pass that down to me, uh, and of time and eternity, and God uh, beyond that. And I, and I myself have always had a great interest in the concept of time and the to concept of eternity, really two different things. So, um, you know, eternity is not necessarily all time, it's beyond that. So, um, uh, and, and, and getting to know God for whom God is, great and powerful and glorious and far beyond all things and all concepts. And yet our humanity comes from Him. Our personhood comes from the person of God. And so we can sit down and talk with this infinite, all-powerful, all-glorious person. He will sit down and talk with us, one-on-one, -on -one, one to a group, father to children, joyously. These are things I've learned from my dad and uh, things I, I, I try to live. Uh, and from time to time, you'll actually hear me quote things. Oh, I remember back when my dad told me this or that because he was usually on the money. I came to understand when I got older, you know, as a kid, you never really know. But as I got older, I thought, boy, you know, his thoughts are right on the money. Like I said, my mom is the one who taught me how to love people without judging people. Uh, and to be open to people because people are people. And that's a very big deal. That's a glorious thing. Uh, Jesus didn't close himself off even when it was getting difficult. We heard in the gospel today, he was being followed by crowds of people. And then this leper comes up to him. What does he do? He, he doesn't say, stay back. He doesn't say, you know, no, I'm too busy, sorry. No. He says, what do you want me to do? If you can heal me, if you choose to heal me, you can. He says, yeah, I do choose to heal you, be healed. And uh, God made room for everyone, God, Jesus, God, Jesus, made room for everyone who came to him. Uh, although he would sneak off sometimes in the early morning to the wilderness just so he could be together with God and just pray one-on-one -on -one with God to refresh himself a bit because he is human, fully God, but fully human. And then back into the fray. It got so that he was, he was healing lepers from time to time. The lepers would be able to re-enter society. Jesus would have to stay outside of society because people were coming at him from all over. Um, he couldn't breathe a lot of the time, but he still he opened himself up to that and he still poured love upon all people and didn't push them away. We try to be like that. We learn through God that love is where we're from and where we're going. And God is love. And when we live in love, kindness, generosity, forgiveness, hospitality, when we live and joy and humor to raise people up, when we live in God here, we live in God forever. 
Jesus forgives us our sins because he pays for them on his own out of love for us. And it was the gates of heaven for us and we rejoice. Let us open gates for one another. Let us not close gates against any of our brothers and sisters. And who are our brothers and sisters? Everybody. So it's a tall order. But as children of God, as kings and queens in the world, we are responsible for everyone else in the world. That's what a king and a queen is. Their job is to put everyone else above them, servants of the people. So let us try to do that. And now with faith and trust, let us bring our needs before the Lord. In our response, let it be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis, may God continue to give him strength and good health as he leads the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For our elected leaders, May the power of God inspire them in their work for a just and lasting peace in our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For all who are sick, especially Dennis Donovan, may Christ the Divine Physician see their need and bring strength and comfort. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For this community here and at home, may the Lord purify and sanctify us through his word and sacrament let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the faithful departed, may the Lord welcome them into his eternal peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. This Mass is offered in a special way today for Mike Smith and Bill Dwyer and my dad, William I. Thompson. May God pour his blessings and peace upon them and life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. And we also pray at this Mass uh, for the continuing Father's Day Novena, which began last Sunday on Father's Day and continued for nine days. So, uh, and if you have a father, not necessarily your father, but any father that you'd like to enroll in our Father's Day Novena, it's not too late to contact our rectory and ask them to enroll. Uh, just give them a call and find out how to do that. Uh, but for all the fathers enrolled in our Father's Day Novena, may God give them peace and life, joy, and himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And for all the holy souls in purgatory, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we know that you see our needs and uh, will our good. Answer these prayers, please, according to your holy will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, be God forever. forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we have come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, uh, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the Lord, kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, Lord, and the glory, glory are yours, now, yours, now and, and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. spirit. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sin of the world. world. Have, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world, free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your demands and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Keep me safe for eternal life. And now, please join with me in reciting an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Past our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart, that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let's pray. Renewed and nourished by the secret, I'm sorry, by the sacred body and the precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be, be to God. God. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will 